endless desperation. Without hope, walk the shell of a man. Then a hand with a nail print stretched outward. Just one touch, then a new life began. And the old rugged cross made a difference in a life. Father, we ask, Lord, for your blessing tonight as we recollect and remember what the Lord Jesus Christ did on Calvary's cross. We might be saved. Lord, it makes our hearts sad that many of those who try to celebrate the death of Christ, O oh God, celebrate them falsely and at the to your word. God, we pray that you would help us to be able to reach down to them and let them know that our Savior is always there to receive them and be their Savior. Lord, may you please bless now our time together as we recap this service tonight. That your name will be magnified and be glorified. I pray for all our people who are here right now, those who are watching through webcast tonight. Please be with them, Lord, and I pray that they will receive a blessing this evening. As we pray in Jesus' name and for his sake alone. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Doon sa aklat ng Lucas. Kabanatang 23, babasahin natin mula doon sa talatang 34 hanggang 46. The book of Luke, chapter 23, verses 34 to 46. I trust that uh, we are not being hacked again by those Palestinians. All right? Please text us, preachers in the congregations abroad, if you are able to watch the webcast right now. 
Then said Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they parted his raiment and cast lots. And the people stood beholding, and the rulers also with them derided him, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself, if he be Christ, the chosen of God. And the soldiers also mocked him, coming to him and offering him vinegar, and saying, if thou be the king of the Jews, save thyself. And a superscription also was written over him in letters of Greek and Latin and Hebrew. This is the king of the Jews. And one of the malefactors with her hand railed on him, saying, If thou be Christ, save thyself and us. But the other answering rebuked him, saying, Dost not thou fear God? seeing thou art in the same condemnation. And we indeed justly, for we receive the due rewards of our deeds. But this man hath done nothing amiss. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. It was, the, it was about the sixth hour, and there was darkness over all the earth until the ninth hour. And the sun was darkened, and the veil of the temple was rent into in the midst. And when Jesus had cried with a loud voice, he said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. And having said thus, he gave up the ghost. The Heavenly Father, may you bless your word tonight. Help us to understand, dear God, your word. And help us, dear Lord, to realize how much you suffered for us, dear Father and dear Lord Jesus. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Ngayong araw na ito, ang lahat ng mga tinatawag na mga Christian religion ay nagkakaroon ng tinatawag na siete palabras or the seven words. Tonight, I'd like to look into it in one shot and explain to you briefly what those sayings are. What are the seven sayings of the cross? Yung mga salitang binanggit ng Panginoon sa krus ng Kalbaryo. The first saying is in Luke 23:34. The Lord Jesus Christ said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. The second saying is in Luke 23:43, where the Lord Jesus Christ told the, the thief, Truly I say, to you, today you will be with me in paradise. The third saying is in John 19, verses 26 to 27. Jesus said to his mother, Woman, this is your son. Then he said to the disciple, John, this is your mother. The fourth saying is in Mark 15:34. And Matthew 27, 46, where the Lord Jesus Christ cried out to God and said, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? The fifth saying is in Gospel of John 19, verse number 28, where the Lord Jesus Christ as a human being said, I thirst. The sixth saying is in John chapter 19, verse number 30. Where the Lord Jesus Christ said, when Jesus had received the wine, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and handed over the Spirit. The seventh saying in Luke chapter 4, 23 and verse number 46, the Lord Jesus Christ crying out with a loud voice and said, Father, into your hands I command my Spirit. The seven sayings that Jesus spoke on the cross during his last hours on earth, exhibited his perfection as the Word made flesh. Ang mga pitong salita na kanyang binigkas doon sa krus sa mga huling araw ng kanyang buhay ay nagpapakita ng kanyang kadalisayan bilang salita, bilang salita na nagkatawang tao. So let's talk about the sayings tonight. First, 
let's talk about the saying, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Ito mga salitang ito ay sinabi ng Panginoon sapagkat doon sa mga Romano at doon sa mga Hudyo na pinapasaring, uh, pinapasaringan ang Diyos. Ito mga Hudyong ito, ito mga Romanong ito ay iniinsulto ang ating Panginoon. And they were committing blasphemy and mockery towards the Lord Jesus Christ. Lahat ng mga nagsabing ipako siya sa krus, lahat ng mga may kasalanan ng kanyang pagkakapako doon sa krus ng Kalbaryo, what did the Lord Jesus Christ say? Father, forgive them. Patawarin niyo sila. For they do not know what they do. The Lord Jesus Christ spoke forgiveness to those who had nailed Him to the cross, signifying that He is the great intercessor and that there is forgiveness of sins through Him alone. That Christ can forgive all kinds of sins, even sins committed against Him. Even sins done against the Lord Jesus Christ. He can forgive. In 1 John 1.7, But if you walk in the light, as He is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanses us from all sin. The blood that was shed on the cross. 1 John 1.9 says, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's why it is sad that many religious people still have to go to the priest, go to the confessional, thinking that their sins can be forgiven. The Lord Jesus Christ made it very clear that no one can forgive sin but God only. God only to the Lord Jesus Christ. We might not even believe we have been forgiven. It might be hard to accept because of the wickedness we have done. But when we come to the Lord Jesus Christ and repent of our sins and ask the Lord to forgive us instantly, the Lord Jesus Christ forgive us of our sins. All our sins, past, present, and future, have been nailed to the cross and have been forgiven. And the Bible says, as far as the east and from, is from the west, the south, from the north, I will never, never, never remember your sin anymore. The second saying on the cross says, Truly, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. The story of two thieves. Yung isang magnanakaw na nakapako sa krus na kasama ng Panginoong Heso Kristo, sinabi niya, kung talagang inikaw, ikay anak ng Diyos, kung talagang may kapangyarihan kang uh, uh, malbagliktas, bakit hindi mo ilig ang sarili mo at isahan mo na rin kami? <laughs> Think of that. Bakit hindi mo iligtas ang iyong sarili? Idamay mo na rin kami. What an insult. Amen? What an insult. And uh, what a, a, a man who is so served with a hot iron, he cannot even repent of his own sins. Pero yung isang magdanakaw, ang sabi niya sa kanyang kapa magdanakaw, magtigil ka. Hindi mo ba alam na tayong dalawa ay nandirito sapagkat nagawa natin ang kasalanan kaya tayo napako sa krus. Pero itong taong itong sa gitna natin, wala siyang ginawang kasalanan. He believed that the Lord Jesus Christ never did anything wrong. And he believed that the very reason why Jesus died on the cross is because of him. And of his own sin, the Lord Jesus Christ, when that man told him, Panginoon, alalahanin mo ako when you go to your kingdom. Alalahanin mo ako pagating mo sa iyong kaharihan of which the Lord Jesus Christ saw his faith. The Lord Jesus Christ saw his repentance. The Lord Jesus Christ saw his uh, dependence on him and said, Ngayon din sa araw na ito, you will be with me in paradise. The Lord Jesus Christ spoke salvation to the penitent thief. And he is promising the same assurance today. He is giving the same assurance today. Amen. And all of those that have trusted Christ as their Savior 
and all of those who ask the Lord to come in their own hearts has this great assurance that when we die, we will be with the Lord in heaven someday. What a great assurance. What eternal security. The third saying, put in John 19, verse 26, 27. Jesus said to his mother, woman, this is your son. Then he said to the disciple, this is your mother. The Lord Jesus Christ spoke love and devotion to and for his mother. The Lord Jesus Christ told his woman, he called, him, he, he called her woman. Every time he would, address, he would address Mary, he would call him woman. He would not call her mother. He would call her woman. Why? Why? To let us know that Mary was the mother of Jesus in the flesh. Mary was the mother of Jesus in the flesh. Mary is never the mother of God. Jesus as the Son of God and Jesus as God the Son does not have any mother. Ang ating nakita rito, ipinakita ng ating Panginoon ang kanyang pag-ibig sa kanyang ina at hindi po siya iniwan na walang kasama. Siya po ay itinagubilin sa isang disciple niya na si John. He charged John to take care of her like, her own, like, like his own mother. And this is to mean that Mary was left to John's keeping and it does not in any way suggest mediatorship. Mary is never the mediator between God and man. Only Christ is. Yan ang pagkakamali ng mga relihiyon. Yan ang pagkakamali ng nagsasabing sila ay mga Kristiyano. When they begin to call Mary the mediatrix. When they can say, well, you can pray to Mary na maawa sana ang Panginoon sa atin. You know, nakakita ka ng isang nagsasabi na kapag ikaw ay tinanggihan ni Kristo, ang sabi niya, kapag ikaw ay lumapit sa Panginoong Heso Kristo at ikaw ay nalalangin sa Kanya, at tinanggihan ka ni Kristo, maaari kang lumapit sa kanyang ina. Bakit? Sapagkat hindi tatanggihan ng anak ang kanyang ina. Ano pa sinabi ng ating Panginoon? Him that cometh unto him, I will know where is cast out. Him that cometh unto me, I will know where is cast out. Ang sino mang lumalapit sa akin, kailanman, hindi ko maaaring tanggihan. Ang sabi ng Panginoon, come unto me, all he that labor are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Amen. And when religion begin to say that, you know what they're saying? Do not believe in Christ. Don't believe in Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ can lie. The Lord Jesus Christ can refuse you. Believe in his mother because his mother cannot lie. And you know what's that? That is blasphemy to the highest degree. At nakakalungkot na napakaraming tao naniniwala dyan. Di ba? Kaya nakikita nyo ang sinasabi nila, Mary, pray for us. Mary, pray for us. Oh, listen. Even Mary acknowledged Jesus Christ to be her Lord. Nung ang, pin nung ang Panginoon ay nasa Kanyang sinupunan pa. Alright? Nung ang Panginoon nasa Christ nasa Kanyang, nung po na ang sabi ni Mary kay, kay Elizabeth. That's my Lord. He is my Lord. You see? Hindi ibig sabihin na nung itinagubilin ng Panginoon ang kanyang ina kay uh, John, ang ibig sabihin ay, alright, sa lahat ng mga taong nagkasabing Kristiyano, o ito si Mary, ha, yan ang ating nanay ngayon. That's wrong. That is false doctrine. That is not what the Bible says. Ang ibig sabihin lamang, John, mawawala ako. I am giving you my mother and treat her to be your mother for safekeeping. Take care 
of her. The fourth saying. In Matthew 27 verse number 46. And Mark 15 verse 34 says. My God. My God. Why have you forsaken me? Why have you forsaken me? The Lord Jesus Christ spoke of severe anguish. Such as this world has never known. The death on the cross is the most cruel death that a man can ever experience. Kahit po yung mag dalawang magdanakaw na pinako sa krus, mga kapatid, ay hindi pwede ikumpara ang nangyari sa ating Panginoong Asa Kristo. Magmula ron nung sa inilites ng sa hukuman ni Pilate. Nung siya'y minumura, nung siya'y mina, niloloko, nung siya'y iniinsuto ng marami mga hudyo. At nung si Pilate nagsabi, pag ganitong klaseng uh, pagdiriwang, ay nagpapakawala tayo ng isang prisonerong hudyo. Sino ang gusto niyo yung pakawalan natin? Si Jesus o si Barabbas? Anong sabi ng mga hudyo? Release to us, Barabbas. Crucify Jesus Christ. Just imagine. Just imagine his own brethren saying that. His own brethren saying that. Ang sabi ni Pilate, siya kumuha ng isang balding tubig at siya nagugat. Sabi niya, I am innocent of the blood of this man. Kayo may gusto niyan, kayo ang bahala dyan. Anong sabi ng mga Hudyo? Let the blood be upon us and our children. That's the reason why today we find the Jews to be in that condition. Let the blood be upon us and our children. When he was before Herod, they put a crown of thorns upon his head. At naniniwala kung ano nilagay yung koronang tinik sa kanyang ulo, ay hindi lamang pinatong yan, kundi idiniin yan. Hanggat ang dugo sa kanyang noo at sa kanyang ulo ay tumataga sa kanyang mukha. May mga nagmumura sa kanya at pinapahulaan kung sino nagmura sa kanya. May dumudura sa kanya mukha. May sumasabunot sa kanyang balbas. May bumapalo sa kanya, sa kanyang likod. Hindi ito naranasan ng sino mang tao na napaparusahan ng isang krimen. Itong taong ito, ang anak ng Diyos, ang Diyos anak, na walang ginawang anumang kasalanan. Walang ginawang anumang katiwalian. He was willing to die for Benny Abante. He was willing to suffer for my sins. And he died. And suffered for the sins of the whole world. Even those who have rejected him. He suffered for them. He felt every pain, folks. Kanyang naramdaman ang bawat sakit na ginawa sa kanya. Mula sa insulto. Mula sa panloloko, mula sa gumura, hanggang sa pagputong ng koronantinik sa kanyang ulo, 
hanggang sa pagdura sa kanya, hanggang sa paghila ng kanyang mga balbas, hanggang sa pagpalo sa kanya, kanyang naramdaman ang bawat sakit na ginawang yan. Hanggang siya ay pinalakad, daladala ang kanyang krus. Doon sa daan ng pabuntang Calvary, gusto kong makita ninyo ang sakit na ginawang ito. Gusto kong maramdaman ninyo ang ginawa ng Panginoon para sa ating lahat. At gusto kong makita ninyo, may mga pagkakataon sa ating buhay, gumagawa pa tayo ng mga bagay-bagay na ayaw ng Panginoon gawin natin. Sin was laid on Christ. My sin, your sin, were laid on the cross and the Lord Jesus Christ felt every pain of the sin put upon Him. So that God, His own Father, must turn away His face from the sin bearer. God the Father in His holiness cannot look down at His Son because at that very moment when Jesus Christ was dying on the cross, God looked at Him. He became the sin bearer for me. When I should die for my sin, Jesus died for me. He died for me. It pleased the Father to forsake His own Son for our sake. It pleased the Father to forsake His own Son for our sake. In Isaiah chapter 53 and verse 11, it says, He shall see of the travail of His soul and shall be satisfied. Look at that. I would like you to understand those words. Okay, nakita ng Diyos Ama ang paghihirap ng kanya anak. And the Bible says, He was satisfied. Do you know why? Because it was God's plan for His own Son to die on the cross. For you and for me. If there's any experience, and if there's anything that can challenge me to serve God more, if there's anything that can challenge me to do His will, it's not because of you. It's not because I've been there for 45 years. No, because it was Jesus who died on the cross for me, who suffered for me. I could never quit the ministry because of that. Can you quit, preachers? You're stupid if you do. You can't even feel the pain. You can listen there and as if there's nothing to it. I feel that pain. Why? Because Jesus Christ did it for me. I feel the pain because I'm so foolish not to even obey Him. He shall see the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many. For he shall bear their iniquities. The fifth saying in John 19, 28 says, I thirst. I thirst. In these two words, the Lord Jesus Christ spoke of his physical suffering on the cross. He suffered as a man to the fullest extent. He suffered as a man to the fullest extent. Nung itong si Apostle Peter cut one of the ears of the arresting team. The Lord Jesus Christ told him, You know, you don't need to do that because I can call, I can send 10 legions of angels to deliver me from this. I can call right now 
and legions of angels would come and get me out of this place. But I will not do that. Do you know why? Because I intend to go to the cross for you. You cannot prevent me from going to the cross. Because if you did, then I will not, I will not be able to save you. Pwede niyang utusan ang legions ng mga anghel upang siya'y tanggalin doon. Pwede niyang piliin na hindi mamatay. Pwede niyang piliin na huwag nang maparusahan. Pwede niyang sabihin, total ang mga tao na makasalanan. They deserve that. They deserve to go to hell. But no, because of His grace. And because of His great love toward us, He chose to die on the cross for us. Do you realize that? He suffered as a man to the fullest extent. Nung sinabi niyang ako'y nauuhaw, ang ibig sabihin niya, hindi niya ginamit ang kanyang pagkajos para hindi niya maranasan ang hirap at ang pasakit. May mga nagsasabi na, oo nga, ang Panginoon ay namatay, pero alam mo, Diyos yan. Kaya pwede niyang tiisin yan, hindi naramdaman. No. He suffered every bit of it. He felt all the pain. All of it. He suffered as a man. In fact, <coughs> pagkatapos noon ay binigyan siya ng suka, vinegar, na merong abdo. For what reason? Pati siya binibigyan, nothing I thirst, pero binigyan sa kanya, yung tubig, yung binigyan sa kanya ay suka na may abdo. Bakit? Because that is, during that day, an aesthetic that will numb his body so that he will not be able to feel the pain. And you know what the Lord Jesus Christ did? He refused it. He refused that. Do you know why? Because he wanted, he wanted to feel every pain. Oh, Lord God, thank you for dying for us. Oh, Lord Jesus, thank you for coming on earth. And thank you for looking at Benny Abante and saving him from sin. He never told us to pay for what he did because we cannot. He never told us to work for what He did because we cannot. He just told us, be like me. Follow me. Obey me. Serve me. Yun lang po ang sinabi sa atin. Is that too much for us to do? Huh? Let me ask you. Is that too much for Jesus to ask? Just telling us, I died for you. I shed my blood for you. I suffered for you. I accepted you. I made, my, I made you my own son. I saved your soul. And the only thing I request from you is be faithful to me and serve me and obey me. Is that too much for Jesus to ask? Huh? Is it?
I could have enjoyed my vacation throughout the whole week. I could have just told our people, come on, just go on vacation if you want to. That's fine. You need some vacation. You need to rest your weary bodies for working for so many hours a day. I need that too. But you know what, folks? This is vacation for me right here. For me to be able to listen to what the Lord Jesus Christ did in my own life. It's more than what I can ask for. I'm so glad I'm here. How about you? How about you? The sixth saying in John 19 verse 30. When Jesus had received the wine, he said it is finished. And he bowed his head and handed over the spirit. The Lord Jesus Christ spoke the greatest and the strongest word ever uttered in one word in the Greek, tetelestai. It is finished. Ano ibig sabihin ng tetelestai? Ano ibig sabihin ng it is finished? It means that on the cross, Christ has completed the work of redemption. Na wala nang pwede pang gawin ng tao para maligtas. Hindi na kinakailangan pang ituloy ang ginawa ni Jesus sapagkat tinapos niya na sa kus ng Kalbaryo. Wala nang dapat pang gampanan ng isang tao kundi magsisin ng kanyang kasalanan at tanggapin ng Panginoon sa kanyang buhay na kanyang tagapagligtas sa magitan ng pananampalataya. Wala nang iba! The greatest and strongest word ever uttered. Wala ka nang dapat tapusin pa. Salvation is just received by faith in Jesus Christ. You know what's that? That's grace. The seven saying, Luke 23, verse 46, the Lord Jesus Christ cried out in a loud voice. You know, I was asking myself, but kinakailangang malakas na tinig in a loud voice. Maybe I'm just assuming here tonight, but let me assume in a way in which I believe all of you can understand. Alam niyo ang palagay ng marami nung ang Panginoon nasa kus ng Kalbero, mahina na siya, am I right? Nung palagay ng marami, nangihina na siya, wala na yung buhay niya, lugmok na siya, wala na siya magagawa pa. But before he died, the Bible says he cried out in a loud voice, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. Hindi niya sinabing, Father, in thy hands I commend my spirit. Hindi niya sinabing, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. No. It is, he said, in the most dynamic way, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Do you know why he said that? To let those people know that even in death, Jesus Christ was strong. Did you hear me? He was not weak. He was not weak and he cannot save anyone. He was strong in telling us, you can come to me and you will be saved. Kaya nga sabi ni Isaiah, his hand is not short that he, it cannot save. Hindi po maiksi ang kamay ng Panginoon para hindi kanya maligtas. The Lord Jesus Christ spoke of words of contentment. Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. It was not a complaining word. It was not a word of frustration. It was not a word of desperation. You know what I'm saying? 
It was not a word of, of, of disappointment. But it was a strong word of, content, of contentment. A strong word of peace in his heart. Knowing that he had finished his work on earth. And had completely satisfied the heavenly father. He literally dismissed his spirit and laid down his life. John 10, 15 says, As the Father knoweth me, even so know I the Father, and what? And I lay down my life for the ship. If God won't allow it, no one can take his life, folks. He voluntarily laid down his life for his own sheep. These are the greatest words ever spoken on earth. There are no greater words than that. But those words on the cross. And what are the reasons why these are the greatest words? Ano ang dahilan kung ba't ito ang pinakadakilang mga salita na binanggit ng isang pinakadakilang tao sa mundong ito? But first of all, these words were spoken by the greatest person who ever lived. Is there anyone greater? Is there anyone greater? No. These words were spoken by the greatest person who ever lived. Jesus Christ came for the purpose of atonement for our salvation. John 17 verse 1 and 2 says, these words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy Son, that thy Son also may glorify thee. As thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. Number two. These words were... These words made known the greatest announcement ever proclaimed. These words made known the greatest announcement ever proclaimed. Ano po ang mga dahilan kung bakit itong mga salitang ito ang pinakadakilang salita? Unang-una sa pagkat ito'y binanggit at sinabi ng pinakadakilang persona. Pangalawa, sa pagkat ang mga salitang ito ay nagpakilala at nagbalita ng pinakadakilang balita na binanggit. Ito ang gospel ng ating Panginoon. Ito ang abuting balita na ibinigay sa atin. That's why we sing that song, Jesus paid it all. All to Him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. That's the greatest announcement the greatest pronouncement. I don't need to die for my sin. Why? Because Jesus paid all my sins on the cross. John 17 verse 3 and 4 says, And this is life eternal, that they might know that the only true God and Jesus Christ, whom thou was sent, I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. 1 Corinthians 1.30 says, But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. Sino ang Panginoong Jesus sa atin? Siya ay wisdom, siya ay righteousness, siya ay sanctification, at siya ay redemption natin. Dahilan sa kanyang kamatayan sa kus ng Kalbaryo. Ano ba ang dahilan? Kung bakit ito ang pinakadakilang salita na nabanggit sa buong mundo. Number three, these words concern the greatest number of people reaching every mortal since the time of Adam. It says, for God so loved the world. 
There is sure salvation for the Jews and Gentiles alike. What was finished was not the life of the Savior, but the work of redemption afforded to man at the same time declaring when Jesus died, that's the end of Judaism. The end of Judaism. The end of the Jewish religion. The end of the Jewish religious ceremonies. The end of all that. In Matthew 27 verse 51, And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from top to bottom, and the earth did quake, and the rocks rent. Nung ang Panginoon po'y namatay, sa kanyang kamatayan, meron nangyayari sa templo. Ano nangyayari sa templo? Doon po sa loob ng templo, may dalawang silid doon. Ang unang silid, ang pangalan, holy place. Ang pangalawang silid, the most holy place or the holy of lowliest. Ang namamagitan doon sa holy place at holy of holiest ay isang napakakapal na kurtina. At ang nakakapasok lamang doon sa holy of holiest ay ang high priest. At kinakailangan gumapang siya sa ilalim ng kurtina para makapasok doon. At doon ino-offer ng high priest ang kasalanan niya at ang kasalanan ng maraming tao. At hawak-hawak niya ang, ang dugo ng isang hayop na pinatay doon sa altar. At iwinawisik ng high priest na yan ang dugo ng hayop na yan doon sa mercy seat sa Ark of the Covenant. At kapag ang Panginoon nagpatawad dahil sa ginawa ng pare, lalabas siyang buhay. At makikita ang siya kayo na glory ng Diyos na lumalabas doon sa templo. Sa so, balik kung hindi, ang mamatay ang high priest doon sa Olive Olius. Sapagat hindi katanggap-tanggap ang kanyang sacrifice. Noong ang Panginoong Yesus namatay, natapos lahat yun. Naunawaan niyo ba? Natapos lahat yun. Kaya meron tayong Book of Hebrews. Hindi na po tayo nabubuhay sa Book of Leviticus. Narinig niyo ako? Hindi na tayo nabubuhay sa Book of Leviticus. Nabubuhay na po tayo sa Book of Hebrews. Na lahat ng mga bagay na ginawa sa Old Testament ay shadows of things to come. Ito yung mga anino. Ito yung mga larawan. Ang pag-offer ng high priest ng dugo doon sa... Uh, Ark of the Covenant ay paglarawan ng dugo ni Kristong nabuo na sa kus ng Kalbaryo. Ito inoffer niya doon sa mercy sa langit. The end of Judaistic religion. The end of Judaistic ritualism. Anong ginawa ng religion? Pinagpatuloy. Pinagpatuloy ng Roman Catholic Church. Pinagpatuloy ng Lutheran Church. Pinagpatuloy ng Anglican Church. Pinagpatuloy ng Greek Orthodox Church. Pinagpatuloy ang mga bagay-bagay na tinapos na ng Panginoon nung si Kristo'y napako sa krus. That was the end. Kaya nga, nung ang Panginoon ay namatay sa krus ng Kalbaryo, ano nangyari sa kortina na naghihiwalay sa holy place as holy volias? Ito po'y napunit mula itaas hanggang ibaba. Ba't kinakailang ilagay doon? The veil of a temple was rent o napunit mula itaas hanggang baba. Bakit po? Sapagkat normal sa isang tao, pagpupunit ng kurtina yan, mag-isang mula sa baba yan. Doon naman niyo ba ako? Pag pupunit ka, hindi ka pupunit sa itaas eh. Sa baba. Ano pinapakita niya? Hindi kayang punitin ng tao yan. Ang dapat lamang pumunit yan, mabula yan, walang iba, kundi ang Panginoong Yesu Kristo. Ang dahilan dyan, nahiwalay. At dahil lang dyan, diretsyo na ang taong makalapit sa ating Panginoon. Niyan na kinakailangan pang gumamit ng pare para mag-alay sa kanya ng sacrifice. He can come to Jesus Christ directly. We become, high, we become priest, believer priest before the Lord. Pangalawa, that's the end of the old covenant. You can read Hebrews 9, 11 to 15. 
But Christ become, being come on high priest of good things to come, by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, he entered in once unto the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. For if the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of an high first sprinkling the unclean, sanctify it to the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who to the eternal spirit offered himself with spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works of the living God. And for this cause, Jesus is the mediator of the New Testament, that by means of death, for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the first testament, they which are called might receive the promise of the eternal inheritance. Nung binigay niya ang kanyang sarili sa kus ng Kalbaryo, he was a prophet, he was a man. So balit nung inalay niya ang kanyang sariling dugo, sa altar dun sa langit. He was the high priest. Kailang ginawa ng Panginoon to? When the Lord Jesus Christ was raised up and went to heaven, the first thing He did was offer His own blood in the mercy seat. In the Holy Holy is in heaven. Once and for all, hindi na kinakailang pang ulit-ulitin to. Once and for all. And because of that, and Sabbath Hebrews, for without the shedding of blood, there is no remissions of sins. Kung wala ang pagbuhos ng dugo, walang kapatawaran ng kasalanan. Can you imagine for a long time, kung ikaw ay liyosong tao sa loob ng maraming maraming taon, Lahat ng ginawa mo walang kwenta sa harapan ng Diyos. Yung pagluod-luod mo sa simbahan, yung pagkukumpisal mo, yung pangungumunyon mo, yung binyag mo, yung holy water na yan, walang kwenta yan sa harapan ng Diyos. Baril na nakilala mo siya, tinanggap mo ang Panginoon sa buhay mo, iyong nalaman na salata ng Diyos, na ang banal na dugo pala ni Kristo ang siya nagugas ng lahat ng iyong kasalanan. Nakakalungkot isipin na ginagamit ang ginawa ni Kristo sa mga bagay na mali. It is sad to know. But you know what? Even those who are doing it were sincere. I believe, I believe that. I, mean, I believe the religious leaders, those priests right there, I believe they were sincere. I believe they were doing it with, a, with all sincerity. But hey, folks, listen. You can be sincere and go to hell. And that is being sincerely wrong. You do not get saved by being sincere. You get saved by putting your faith and trust upon Jesus Christ alone as your Savior. That's one reason why we ought to do more that others might be saved. Amen? Amen. We should. We should. Ano pa ang ibig sabihin nito? The end of sacrifices. The end of sacrifices. Hebrews 10, 10 to 14, by the which will we are sanctified to the offering of the whole of the body of Jesus Christ. How many times? How many times? Huh? Hebrews 10, 10 to 14. Tignan nyo. Basahin nyo. By the which we were sanctified to the offering of the body of Jesus Christ. How many times? Once for all. Verse number 11. Look here. And every priest standeth daily, ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices is what? Which can never take away sins. That's why kahit anong simba ninyo nung araw, umuwi kayo from, from, from your church, are you sure you're forgiven? No. No. 
There is no surety in religion. There is surety in Christ Jesus. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sin forever, sat down on the right hand of God. From henceforth, expecting till his enemies be made his footstool. For by one offering he had perfected forever them that are sanctified. Next is this. What happened? The words concerned the greatest number of people was that the beginning of a new life in Christ. Our salvation is the beginning of a new life in Christ. Doesn't mean that we're perfect, no. We can still sin. We can still do sin. We know that, amen? We know that. How many people have we presented here in our church so many times? How many of us think that we are perfect? No, we're not. We're still sinners. But hey, different. We're sinners saved by grace. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, old things are become new. Another reason why the words on the cross are the greatest words ever spoken. Number four, they announce the greatest victory ever won. They announce the greatest victory ever won. Doon ipinahayag ang pinakatakilang tagumpay na pinagtanggumpayan ng ating Panginoong Heso Kristo. 1 Corinthians 15 verses 55 to 57. O death, where's thy sting? O grave, where's thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Satan, the Lord's greatest enemy, tried to prevent the Lord Jesus Christ from shedding his blood since the very beginning of the human race. Ang Jablo, ang katangi-tanging kaaway ng Panginoon, mula pa nung simula ng tao, mula pa bago tinatag uh, ang mundo, ay kanya nang pinipigilan na ang Panginoong sa Kristo ay mamatay sa kos ng Kalbaryo at ibuhos ang kanyang dugo. Bakit? Sa pagkatsyon ang tatalo sa kanya. Ano ang ginawa niya? The curse and the fall of man. The death of Abel, the promised seed. The union of the righteous people with ungodly men. The death of the firstborn during Christ's birth and the temptation of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lahat ito mga nangyaring ito sa kaysaysayan sa Bible ay pagpipigil ng jablo upang ang Panginoong sa Kristo ay mamatay sa kust ng Kalbaryo. But no, sa lahat ng mga bagay na ito, Satan failed. Sa lahat ng kanyang mga ginawa, Satan was the loser. And there are times we need to tell Satan, Satan, you are a loser. You cannot win over me because Jesus Christ in my life. He saved my soul. And he is there in my heart. It only means that no one can ever thwart or frustrate the purposes of God. That the Lord Jesus Christ died for us to live for Him. That He finished the work of salvation because we can neither finish it nor even start it. And that Christ has done all these things because He loved us. Again, it says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Romans 5.8 says, But God commended 
his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Marami sa atin ay nakapanood marahil na ginawang pelikula ni Mel Gibson, The Passion of the Christ. Yan ay ating pinalabas twice dito sa ating church. At nakita natin ang cruelty. Nakita natin ang violence. Am I right? Nakita natin ang cruelty ng kamatayan ni Kristo. Pero nais kong sabihin sa inyo, sa tunay na kasaysayan, mas cruel pa at mas violent pa nangyari sa Kanya. That what happened to Christ, His sufferings, His death on the cross, cannot even be put on film. Do you realize that? It cannot even be depicted by man. It is so cruel. It is so violent that man cannot even depict it. How can we as believers in Christ be melancholic in serving God? Ano tayo mga anak ng Diyos na nakaranas ng kaligtasan ni Kristo dahilan sa kanyang kamatayan sa krus ay magiging walang interes sa gawain ng Panginoon. It's time to search our hearts tonight. Number one, talaga bang ligtas ka? Time to search our heart and ask yourself that question. Am I truly saved? There are times I ask myself that. Do you realize that? Pastor na ako, mga kabatid. Matagal na akong nagpipitch. Tatanong ko pa yung sarili ko, talaga ba akong saved? Ha? Meron ako nakikita mga tao dito. Alright? Wala. Meron mga taong walang pakundangan kung magkasala. Wala pakundangan kung na hindi sumunod sa Panginoon. Pero kahit kailan, hindi nagkatawag ng salvation. Siguradong sigurado sila. Pero ako, magkamali lang ako at magkasala, kinikwestiyon ko aking sarili. Hindi ko kinikwestiyon ng Diyos. You know why? Because even the Apostle Paul said, even if you deny yourself, God is faithful. May mga pagkakataon sa ating buhay, examine our lives. Talaga bang ligtas ako? Saan ako iniligtas? Bakit ako naligtas? Tama ang sinabi ni Pastor Hernes. Hindi tayo naligtas para pumunta ng langit. Naligtas tayo para maglikod sa Kanya. Naunumahan niyo ba ako? Ulitin ko ha. Hindi ka naligtas para pumunta ng langit. Naligtas ka para maglikod sa Kanya. And so many times, parang maging napakadali ng kaligtasan. Ay, sabihin natin, you know, tulad ng turo sa atin, ikaw ba'y 100% sure you're going to heaven? And of course, kung hindi mo alam, hindi mo alam, di ba? And this is the right question. At hindi pinapaliwanag ito hanggang sa lima ligtas. Ano lang iniisip, ah, ako'y naligtas para pumunta ng langit. Kaya hindi ko kinakailang mabuhay na, ma mabuhay na mausay sa lupa. I can live my own life. Anyway, I'm going to heaven. No. You cannot live your own life. Because you think you're going to heaven. Gusto kong sabihin sa inyo muli, hindi ka naligtas para pumunta ng langit. Ikaw ay naligtas upang maglingkot sa Kanya. Ikaw ay naligtas sapagat ang Panginoon, ang ating Diyos, ay nagahanap ng mga tao mula sa kasalanan na siyang sasamba sa Kanya. At sa pagsambang yan, at sa pagilingkod na yan, ang Panginoon, ang ating Diyos, ang magtatanggal sa atin sa makasalanan mundong ito at lilipat tayo sa isang perfectong lugar at banal na lugar 
kung saan hindi na tayo magkakasalang muli. And that's heaven. That is eternal life. That is eternal security. Sana isipin natin mabuti ito. Na hindi tayo iniligtas ng Diyos upang pumunta ng langit lamang. Kundi tayo iniligtas niya upang kanyang maging mga anak, upang kanyang maging tagasunod kung saan ang punta niya, nandun tayong lahat. Tumayo tayo. Habang nakayo ko ang mga ulot na kapikit ang mga mata, meron ba rito sa ating kalagitnaan bago tayo manalangin? Marahil meron. Marahil member ng ating church na wala talagang katunayan ng kaligtasan. Talagang sa puso mo, hindi mo alam na ikaw ay ligtas. Sa puso mo, hindi ka nakakatiyak na si Kristo'y nasa puso mo, na inirahan. Kung meron dyan, itaas mo yung kamay. Itaas mo yung kamay. Kung meron pa sa ating kalagitnaan. Meron mo ba? Alright. Kung tayong lahat, ligtas, kung tayong lahat may katiyakan ng kaligtasan, ano ba ang layunin kung ba tayo niligtas ng Diyos? Bakit kinakailangan mapakasakit ang Panginoon sa Kusang Kalbari? Bakit kinakailangan mahirapan siya? Pwede na lang siguro mamatay siya eh. Pero ba't ba siya nahirapan? Ba't kinakailangan maranasan niya ang pagdurusa bago siya namatay? Ba't kinakailangan doon palang sa hukuman? Putungan na siya ng koronantinik at umagos ang dugo sa kanyang muka. Bakit hindi na lang ginaya yung mga magnanakaw sa krus? Pinakaw at abos na. Ba't kinakailangan mahirapan ang gusto ang ating Panginoon? Bakit yung lamang ang tanging paraan upang ang ating kasalanan ay kanyang bayaran? Anong klaseng pahasalamat mayroon tayo? Kayo, man, kayo matagal ng ligtas, kayo mga bagong ligtas, kayo mga bagong members ng church natin. Anong klaseng hamon ang ginagawa sa inyo ng kamatayan ni Kristo? Paano? Kayo nag-iisip pag pinag-uusapan ng kanyang kamatayan? Paano tayo maaari ang pasalamat? Sa panalangin lang ba? O sa pag-ilikot sa Kanya? At sa pag sa Kanya ng tapat? At sa pagiging matapat kay Kristo? Pag ikaw na nalangin dito sa harapan ng altar at nagpapasalamat, ibig sabihin niya, ikaw din mag-ilikot sa Kanya ng buong katapatan. Pumunta ka sa altar na ito. At sabihin mo yan ngayon.